Hi, my name is Myrna Carroll. I have been a dental hygienist for the last 20 years and bridged over into 3D imaging the last three years. CBCT, which stands for Cone Beam Computer Tomography. Today, I'm excited to share some insights on how the whole team can benefit from 3D imaging. Wow. 2D imaging has been around since 1896. It has been the primary source of diagnostic aid to the dental professional um, to help diagnose patients and give them more insight on uh, treatment planning. Since the mid-1980s, uh, the technology switched over into more digital format. Um, there have been great advances in this technology with digital sensors and panoramic machines. We are confident with taking images now and comfortable with diagnostic interpretation. However, there are limitations to 2D imaging and 3D provides for more precise treatment plans and diagnostics. CBCT imaging was first introduced in Europe in 1996, and then it was units were sold in the US in the early 2000s. For those that aren't familiar, CBCT um, is a series of images, slices, that the machine takes, and then the software, the algorithm, converts it into a 3D image. It is a true one-to-one -one ratio, which is really helpful for implants, um, more interpretation, root morphology. So it really gives us a lot of information on how to treat the patient. Early on, it used to be larger equipment, difficult to, to take images, and long processing times. Now you can position a patient, acquire an image, and have the image displayed in about three to five minutes, around the same time for taking an FMX. It gives us three um, views, the axial view, which is from top down, coronal view, which is from front to back, and sagittal views, cross-sectional views. So it really helps dissect the tooth and the area to really understand what is happening in the patient's mouth. I'm going to show you a couple of scans and ways that you can help incorporate this into your practice. For those that are hygienists, it's a, one of the great ways of having 3D imaging is to help map out the nerve for giving IA injections. We can see the exit of the foramen and we can map and get a good visualization of where to place the injection site. If we look at this panoramic view here, we can see on the right hand side, the IA nerve, you would have to map this out into the image, but here we can see exactly where the exit of the foramen is. This is a, a constructed 2D pan from a 3D image. So it's not as clear as your regular 2D pan, but it still gives us a lot of information. I'm going to minimize this here. We're gonna go into our cross-sectional view here. And now I'm just gonna go through the slices. And as you can see the pink area here, there's the exit of the foramen here, mental foramen. So that it will give us an idea of exactly where that is. We know it's in between the two bicuspids here, but some mental foramens are either more superior or inferior to where that location is. So when we can help visualize where to give that injection site here, as we scroll through, now we can follow that IA nerve all the way up and we're going to go through that here and you can see exactly where that um, is adjacent to. Now we're going to go up a little further and now we're up into the site here. So this is a great way to help visualize where to give that injection site. Another way to use the 3D imaging is for scaling and replaning. So as we look at to this screen here, we can see on the pan, I'm gonna maximize this here. 
Here we can see, yes, there's definitely evidence of bone loss, but one of the ways we can really get a true assessment as far as how much bone loss is by, um, we can measure it, which for cone beam imaging, it is a true one to one ratio. So if the bone loss is 5.3, it is 5.3. Um, also, it could also give us a better indication maybe for uh, pocket decontamination using your lasers if you need to for perio treatment. So we're going to take a look at number 1415 area and we can get a better assessment of how far that bone has deteriorated. So we're going to go into our axial view here. I'm going to enlarge the screen here. And if we look here, um, I'm scrolling up to the maxillary area, and now we can see the amount of bone loss here. Do you see this radiolucent area right here? That is the amount of bone loss that is in that area. These are the roots that are separated. We can see here into this vocation area how far down the bone has deteriorated. So it'll give us a better idea of a, what type of instruments to use, what other types of perio treatment we can provide for the patient, and give us a better assessment of root morphology. So if the tooth is curved or the roots are curved, um, this will give us a better indication of where to navigate into that pocket. Now we're gonna take a look at that same patient and we're gonna take a look at number 31 area. Here we can see how bad the defect is here with the bone loss on the tangential view. We can measure this as well. I'm gonna come here to our measuring tool and we're just gonna start at the CEJ and just follow this path all along. So this will definitely give us more information. It's all the way down to the apex. So I'm gonna measure this straight into the apex. So right now it is a 12.5 nine millimeter pocket. So if we can visualize how deep that will go, obviously, um, you know, doctor will help uh, diagnose if this tooth is worth saving, but in, in regardless, it'll give you a good information as far as how to get into that area more effectively for the patient. We're gonna take a look now at that same tooth and we're gonna look at it at the axial view. Here we can see that same tooth. Look at how much of the bone loss is surrounded in that area. So not only from the buccal side, from the mesial side, and it goes all the way into the lingual side as well. So this will help give you a better assessment too, um, the amount of bone loss in that area. And right now we're just going through the scan and assessing how much of the bone loss is there. One of the ways is sleep apnea. There's over 22 million Americans that are diagnosed with some type of sleep disorder. 18 million of those are between mild to moderate to severe sleep apnea. So one of the ways we can help our patients is by having those conversations in ways to help assess their overall health. As we know, sleep apnea can lead to uncontrolled diabetes, heart issues, heart disease, high blood pressure, depression. So one of the ways we can help lead them into a right direction is having those conversations and showing them the technology in which we can help uh, benefit and, and help even save their lives in some case. Here we've dissected the airway and we can see here that on this view, the most restricted area is obviously highlighted in red. Here we have the airway profile. So here we can follow this uh, path along. And I'm gonna show you from the top down. We can follow this airway path and you can show the patient like right here is the most restricted part of your airway. So just think, this is the patient uh, standing up and taking the image. Can you imagine if the patient has been sleeping? And not only that, but the back of the far wall will, will collapse. So the airway would collapse when they're sleeping. 
So this is a good indication. Um, again, this is not a diagnostic tool uh, for the patient by any means, but it will definitely increase awareness. They will still have to get a sleep study done um, through their doctor and have that interpreted um, for better uh, assessment. So here we can see, I'm just showing this around, but this is where the whole dental team can get involved and have those conversations with the patient and have, how are you sleeping at night? Are you tired during the day? How is there, have heart issues or medications? We can have those conversations with them. And maybe it could be as simple as just getting an appliance done for them, um, moving that mandible more forward so they can have more air uh, throughout the middle of the night. So this is a really an exciting way for get, to get the patients involved and um, in their oral health and as you as well in helping them have better quality of life. Another way we can benefit from 3D imaging is for better uh, pathology and diagnostics. Uh, what we're looking at right now is a patient that has a typical pan. At first glance, you can't really take a look at anything. The patient complained of some discomfort on the upper uh, right-hand side, but honestly, it's hard to really tell and assessing just from an overall view. <clears throat> so we ended up taking a 3D image on the same patient. So this is the same patient we took a 3D image on. Um, if we look here, not too much going on. We're gonna go into the 3D exam. So now we're gonna go over and click on number two area. Now let's take a look at the axial view. Look at the fracture from distal to mesial on that palatal root. Here we can see how that fracture is right there. So based on that, if we can remember, based on that other 2D pan, it was really hard to see that in that area. We're gonna take another look at that shot on our cross-sectional view. Move my hairs here. So here's that same tooth. Look at that fracture coming down from superior to inferior all the way across. So that palatal root. So it really does give us some insight on how to better treat the patient when they're coming in versus watching it. We can act on it right away and help alleviate some of the pain for this patient. So this is just a great tool for better diagnostics and better treatment for your patient. And you can see that when they're coming in and talking, talking to you um, about what's going on. I hope you found uh, this little video helpful and give you some good tools and tips to assess this if you have this into your office and how you can utilize this better for you and your team. Thank you so much and have a great day.